you're going to make use of RAG for large language models, you're going to need a place to store that the, the embeddings, the documents that you're going to augment your large language models with. RAG lets you create a whole collection of documents that turn to, get turned into chunks that you then augment your large language model with so that it has this information to help it answer questions. This is really good for very current or very proprietary information that would not be in the foundation model already. We're going to look at Chroma DB. Chroma DB is an, an open source AI application database. And look at that, batteries are included. I'm not sure what that means. But this is a very, very popular, there's commercial ones as well, but this is a very, very popular embeddings database that you can use. We're going to make use of this in this course. In the last part of this module, we're going to also see how you can run this as a separate server. Right now, we're going to just run it just as a Python library so that it's it's pulling data in, but you can run it in a much more advanced sort of detached sort of way that you then use a client library to actually access it. And I'll show you how to do that. That's probably not the kind of thing you'd really want to do in Colab. You'd probably want to do that off running on a server somewhere that you would then connect to. But let's take a look at how we're going to make use of this. So you'll run this portion first. This is going to install Chroma DB and everything that we need. This also gets you your open AI API key, which you should have stored in your keys section. If you want to use something other than open AI, you'll have to make some adaptations to this code, but it's Langchain. So that should help you to be able to make that, make those changes. This course focuses just on open AI. So introduction to the Chroma DB. I've got a link to it here and you can see this is sort of the structure of, of it. So you're going to have queries. And by the way, this, this uh, image comes from Chroma themselves, but you're going to have your app. It is going to submit queries and those queries are going to go through an open AI in this case embedding. So it is going to put it through an embedding model and this is going to turn those queries that query into some sort of an embedding string and well we'll or embedding vector really i guess i would call it we're going to see more of those in the next part of this module we're going to see exactly what they look like and how we make use of them but the embedding is some sort of a vector like this and it's going to go across all of its documents and it's going to find the ones that are the most applicable. Now you need to specify some sort of threshold for how close you would really like these, these embedding vectors to be in terms of like they're doing like a cosine distance or, or some other, some other vector, vector distance. I believe that is one of the further things you can, you can optimize on your search. And then it returns it and it gets added to the context window. So you've got your query that you normally had plus this, and then that goes to the LLM and you're going to get an answer. So that's fundamentally how RAG is working with an embeddings database. The embeddings database becomes very important because it's your search. You can also bake some security into this because most databases do have the ability to only allow users to certain users to access certain things. So if you have your security model set up so that the embeddings database is also observing that, you don't have to worry about a user accidentally getting some data into the large language model where it can ask about it. Because if you don't have your, your security set up, set up properly, I mean, maybe you're a corporation and you've got this big SharePoint site that has all kinds of information about it. It's your, it's your company's intranet, so to speak, is what they used to call those. A user could actually query and say, you know, as a, as a level four software engineer, what are some documents that could help me that the company probably didn't want me to look at? And it'll, it'll go and find those for you because LLMs are extremely, extremely helpful. But you, if so long as your users who are putting these documents onto, 
onto SharePoint are flagging them correctly, then you shouldn't have to worry about them accidentally appearing in a search. So here we're going to import it and we're going to use, use the, just the regular client. And then we're going to add, we're going to see how you can add some things to it. So you'll add your documents and then the, um, any, any metadata, which is just what you're going to filter on explaining that you give the documents IDs as well so that you can refer to them later. Then you can do a query. You can use the usual where sort of things. Usually the where is controlling the mask of, of what's actually coming, coming back to you, but you can, you're usually going to be looking for things according to how close they are in terms of a vector distance that, that the embedding, that the two embedding vectors, the embedding vector of your query versus the embedding vector of each of the documents as it's going through, how close are those? And that determines if you're going to get that back. In number results two, that would mean you would want the two closest ones. So the example here, we're going to use the PsyQ data set. This is a hugging face data set. And it contains a bunch of questions and answers for, <coughs> for science exams, like in college or high school. So we load it, we load the training data, and we basically just set up the, the filter. So only if it has support. Support is, is, the, is the answer for, for that question. And we get the number of questions with support and we load them all, we load them all in. Now we're going to embed, so that means calculate the embedding for it and store the first 100 supports for this example. So we're not loading the whole thing in just for, just for time and cost reasons. Now, if you want to see what this looks like, you can see um, a question like, what type of organism is commonly used in the preparation of food? And then it finds the support. So this is the data based on this question that I found in that document that would potentially answer that. And you can see we go through, we display quite a few of these. We're basically just taking questions from the, from the, the data set and then finding the appropriate support that would that would answer those. Thank you for watching this video. This is a very brief introduction to Chroma DB. We're going to make use of it even more in the next few parts where we plug it in and make use of it by loading rag documents and other things into that. Um, so thank you for watching the video and please subscribe to the channel and click like if this was helpful to you. Thank you very much.